Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Coffee Chug, and I am here today to walk you through the program of how to code your slide tone guitar. And so I want to explain to Coke, I think it's important that you understand how things work. Once again, just as you'll see in the show notes, or if you're coming across it in the blog post, or wherever you're coming across this, this video, this is not my idea. This was a guitar that was created in both the NXT 1.0 and 2.0 versions. I have just adapted it, upgraded it to the EV3 kit, kind of added my own little flair to the build design, but the code has just been converted from the NXT to the EV3. So um, it's not my original idea. There are many ideas out there, but at least I want to explain what I've done in the coding so it makes sense to you because a lot of you are using EV3 and not NXT. So the first thing that we're going to do, we are going to go over here and we are going to create an infinite loop. We want this program to work forever and ever until we turn the program off. And what we're going to do within here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop in a switch block in between. And we're actually going to be using a couple of these. but. It defaults here to the touch, and we're going to knock this down, and we're going to make this a logic. And so we're going to be using a lot of logic information and data blocks within this code. And so we'll come back to this, but basically what we want to do now is we want to have our sound in the false of this switch block just to stop. What this will eventually do, this will be the pathway of our code that when we are not pressing any buttons, no noise is going to be made. So let's take this back a step, and we're going to go dabble in here into these yellow sensor blocks. And the, what we're going to do is, the way we have this guitar program is to use the brick buttons. Now you could use any kind of sensor input you want. I just chose the brick buttons because it was simple and easy to use and easy to navigate with our hands. And we're going to trigger three buttons. Once again, you could adapt this to make this whatever you would wish. So we're going to drop this down to compare. And when we go here to this option, we can choose any of the brick buttons that we want. In this case, I'm going to choose the left. And so we've got that put in there. We're going to have the setting here to 1, so just when it's pressed. All right, and we're going to drag in a, another brick button. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to change it over to the Enter button. Now, could we have technically gone here and clicked all these options? Yes, but I'm building it out this way so you can kind of see the logic behind it. So technically, we could have come over here and just checked any of these buttons that we wanted, turn them all on so they all work. But for the sake of this demo, so you understand how the code works, we're going to keep them separate. Then we're going to jump over here to our red blocks here, our data operations. And in here, we're going to go ahead and grab a logic block. We're going to drag that over here. And we've got some choices. We got and or X or and not. Um, just to keep it simple so we don't get too confusing when we're rocking out on our guitar solo, we're going to choose the or. And we're going to drop in and we're going to drag our blocks here. So I can go from equal here to A, and I'm going to go with my equal here over here to B. What this is basically saying if this button, the left button, or the enter button is pressed, then that's going to be true, and it's going to signal it up that way. Uh, eventually, that's what it's going to do. But I want to show you what if you want to have other options. And so we're going to drag another block in over here, another brick button. And let's just make this one the right button, just so you can see. So we, have, we could use the left button, enter button, or right. And we've got these here with the OR command. Left or enter could be pressed. And now we have this as a third option. So what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to drag this here. If this either one of these is equals true, we're going to go through. Oh, I'm forgetting one little step here. We need another logic block right here. And we're going to make this OR. So if either one of these buttons are pressed, or if this one is pressed, the right button, then we have a true statement. And we're going to drag this over here. Then that's going to be true. If none of the buttons are pressed, if left, enter, or right, neither one is pressed, it's going to trigger as false. And it's going to come down here and it's going to play nothing. But if left, enter, 
or the right button is pressed, it's going to read it as true and it's going to send it up here to do whatever it is that we program it to do. So there is the first line of command. Yes, I could have made these all one blocks. I could have made these X or, meaning that only one could be pressed. So if you actually happen to press two of these at the same time, it would turn off. Um, you know, that's for you to kind of finagle and, and have some fun with within your own code. So now over here, we have these commands. We know now that if none of the buttons are pressed, it's going to shoot down here. Nothing's going to be done. So we're going to pop up here to this true, and I'm actually just going to expand this, and I'm going to move it over so we can see, because we're going to be adding some things here. It'll be a little bit easier for you to read. And what we're actually going to do now in here is we're going to put another switch block in here. So we're going to add a switch. This is another switch. And so you can start to see here. Oh, I got my hand on there. There, goofball. There we go. We're going to toss that in here. All right, now keep in mind your sensors, whatever you have them plugged into. So on the build instructions, I have my touch sensors plugged into ports two and three. You just need to double check where you've got yours plugged in. And I'm gonna have this as in this state here compared to if it's going to be pressed, we're gonna trigger that command. So if the touch sensor is pressed and it's gonna run this here, if the touch sensor is not pressed, it's gonna shoot down here, okay? Hopefully you're with me so far. And so what we want to do is we're going to kind of back end the switch block here a little bit. So we're going to drop back down to our sensor modes and we're going to drag a touch sensor right here. So if my touch sensor 2 is being pressed, we're going to go to compare state and it's 1, it's being pressed. All right, then what do we want it to do? We want to have another logic block right before this. All right, and we have two touch sensors on our, on, our, on our guitar. We have one that can change the octave up and another one that can change the octave down. So I'm actually then going to redesign this sensor here to be number three. And so what I can do here now is if one is pressed, we can go here to A. And this one here, if sensor number three is pressed, that's going to be B. What we want to do here in this particular code on this step, and this is where it's going to be important, we want an X or option. What this means, only one of these can be pressed. If both buttons are pressed, it's going to default out and it's going to prove it as false. So it's either we have yes for A or yes for B, but we can't have both. All right, and so then we're going to wire these, just like we were doing before, we're going to wire this over here to this touch sensor. But one of the things that we need to do before we get too far involved in this is we had that sensor as a touch and we need to switch that to make it a logic so we're going to be doing another logic command so it needs to make a decision whether it's seeing the A or B option once we're in this command okay so we had that as touch before we need to switch this to the logic all right now it's going to be making a decision whether this is true or false if these buttons are pressed if A is pressed, it's going to go up here, B, or ports 2 and 3, or if nothing, down below. All right. So as we get our code in here, and for the sake of time, all right, what we're going to do then is we're going to go through and we're going to add another switch. So I went down here to the orange and I, I brought up a switch and this is going to be a touch sensor and we're using touch sensor 2. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Touch sensor 2, if it's 2 is being pressed, all right, in this statement, statement here, it's going to shoot up and now it's going to do some math calculations. And so we're going down here to this yellow sensor and I pulled up the ultrasonic. We're measuring in centimeters. And then we're using our math blocks. And so I dragged up this math block here and I made it multiply. And I dragged whatever the distance is on the ultrasonic right over here into B. 
And what I'm doing, I can go into port view and I can see an ultrasonic sensor from my build will read anywhere from 3 centimeters to 23 centimeters. So you can mess with this number to get different kind of tones. We're just starting with uh, 75, but you know, we can make this, let's make it 100 just for the sake you can see that, that it doesn't matter. You can play around with this. So this is going to do 100 and it's going to multiply it by this distance. So if we had a distance of 3 centimeters, this is going to be 300. And we're going to take that equation. We dragged up another math block right here, and we made this divide. So now we're going to take 300, and we're going to divide it by 2. And then I added in a sound block right here. I switched it down to tone, and it's going to play the hertz range of 150 for half a second at volume 75. And I don't have this on wait for completion. I have it as display once, so that way you get this continuous noise. Now, if 2 is not being pressed, it's going to go down here to false, and it's going to assume then that 3 was pressed, right? Because if you remember our, our logic that we had over here, we have, in this case, if button 1 or touch sensor in port 2 is being pressed, or touch sensor 3 is being pressed, it has to be one or the other. If that's the case, it's true. And if it's true that 2 is being pressed, then it's going to run up here to the true statement. If it's not 2 being pressed, then it knows it's going to be false. And we know that we're hitting the 3 button, or port sensor 3. And so we have the same code right here. It's going to take the distance of the ultrasonic. We're going to multiply that. Let's make it 100 for the sake of the video. We're multiplying again. This time we're going to multiply. And so we're going to multiply by 2, and then we're going to do that frequency. So what's happening is, if I press the touch sensors, this will drop the tone down an octave, and this will bring it up an octave as we do the math. Now the last thing, if we back out of here again, what happens if we don't hit either touch sensor? So remember back here, it was making a decision, left, enter, or right. If that holds true, it's kicking up here to the true command and it's looking for these if neither one of these buttons are pressed and it's going to go down here to false and now it's going to play this regular tone so this is the regular tone that's going to be used right here and then up here is if we hit the one touch sensor it's going to multiply it by two raise it an octave it's going to lower it an octave and then obviously if nothing is being pressed no noise so when you get it all done, and I'll put a link so you can access this file yourself, this is what our code looks like. And when we go to run the program, I don't know if you can hear, we'll see if we can get you to hear it here. When I hit a button, and if I hit a touch sensor, if I hit the other one, you can hear it raise and lower. And then if I slide, And now we've got our own guitar. So that's just a little bit of math of how to kind of figure out the coding behind it. I um, hope you found it helpful. Let me know what you think. My next steps here, in case you're wondering where I'm going to go with this next, is to swap out tones and actually make it power guitar chords. And so I'm working on that option right now. Uh, but you can see here in the code, let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see like the flow of logic going on here. Like I'm not pressing anything on my guitar right now. So it's reading through this saying, no, oop. None of those buttons are being pressed. Down here, sound off. Now if I press a key, it picks up. You can see where it's picking up right here. It's making a decision. No buttons are pressed, so it's running here. If I press a touch sensor, in this case I'm hitting touch sensor 2, and I hit number 3, you can see how the flow goes through. All right, guys, hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, stay awesome.